Welcome to the Wonders of Watercolour, where this week we're going to be painting this pretty pansy using Inktense pencils. As you can see, I've done a really simple outline here on my watercolour paper, and don't worry if you can't draw because we do provide you with a free traceable that looks like this, and I'll be telling you later on in this video how you can obtain it. So I've just traced it down by scribbling on the back and just tracing the outline. We're just using a selection of Inktense pencils, Sun Yellow, Golden Yellow, Cadmium Orange, Burnt Orange, Red Oxide and Shiraz. I'll be using my watercolour brushes from my own set from Craftemo and I begin by just swatching out the pencils on some watercolour paper as you can see here. There are lots of different ways that you can use ink tents. Um, it depends on what you prefer to use um, but I like using it this way because it does give you full control little bit like using watercolour but it does mean that it won't lift off in the way that watercolour does. So you can see to begin with I've mixed a really watery version of Shiraz um, which takes it to this pale pink tone. If you're looking carefully at the photo you'll see that there's an underlying pink tone on some of the areas and then I've added golden yellow and lemon yellow, uh, sorry uh, what have we got here, lemon yellow to just put down that first wash. Now unlike watercolour it won't lift off when it's dry so the great thing about using ink tents is that they will layer up and you don't have to worry about that lift off in the way that you do with watercolour. So if you are struggling with watercolour, these are a great medium to use. I'm using my number eight brush, as I said, from my brush set from Craftemo. We are going to be re relaunching these um, very shortly. So if you want to check them out, I'll put the link in the description box along with all the materials that I'm using today. So if I am going a little bit too quickly for you, you can uh, check them out in the description box underneath. The paper that I'm using is a cold press. It's from Etcher. And you can see me here just adding a layer of the Inktense pencil and just using it in the way that I would use watercolor. You saw me swatching out the colors on some watercolor paper, but somebody has told me, I know that there are, um, I think Karen Dash make a, um, a pad that you can scribble them on like a, a plastic type block but I just use paper because I had some ready. So as you can see, I've swatched out some cadmium orange here with a little bit of golden yellow, and I've just applied it with my brush. And with my brush clean and damp, you can see how I'm blending that into the existing wash. Now that first layer must be completely dry before you do this because it gives it, um, it stops it from blurring and it stops your painting from looking overworked. So it's important that you make sure that each layer is dry rather like um, the way that you would with watercolour. You can see here that by adding lots of water to that pigment, you can just apply your paint like this, like I said, by layering it up in the way that you would with watercolour. You can see we've got a hard edge there, so I'm just cleaning my brush, patting it dry, and then picking up that pigment. Going back to the Shiraz and adding that pink tone to the outside edge there with my brush and just blending it in like before. We've got quite a few intense tutorials on this channel now and I'll put a playlist right at the end of this video so that if you want to take a look on how to use them in more detail um, I'll put them right at the end so you can check them out later on. Scribbling out some burnt orange, picking up that pigment and just dropping it in as you can see me doing here. I'm using this wet in wet in the way that you would use watercolour again by dropping it into wet paint. It gives it this lovely soft blurry look and very, very blurry and natural looking. If you did want the simple outline, um, just the pencil version, you can wait until the end. I'll put it right at the end of this video. So all you need to do is pause the video and you can screenshot it and print it out that way. But if you want the digital version um, that I showed you at the start there, then you can have that for free by joining our free membership level over on Patreon and you'll have it delivered to your inbox once a week. So you don't even have to scroll through. It's completely free, um, no strings attached. But just to let you know, and in case you're interested in botanical painting, we do have paid memberships over there. Um, if you do want to level up your watercolour painting with um, some botanical work, if you're interested in botanical work, then do take a look. 
let's have a look to see what you get. When you join Patreon, you will have access to exclusive content that you just won't find here on YouTube. Whether you're a seasoned artist or just dipping your brush into botanical watercolour, you may want to join us here on Patreon where the magic happens. And with Patreon's new collections tab, it makes accessing the tutorials super easy. When you join us here on Patreon, we dive deep into the art of botanical watercolours, from vibrant blooms to fine detail, and I'm here to guide you every step of the way. We have three membership levels to suit your skill and budget, and we even have a mentorship and coaching level, so if you're serious about developing your skills, then this could be the level for you. And now you can join Patreon for free, which will give you access to all of our YouTube traceables, which will be delivered weekly to your inbox, so no more scrolling through for the images. So if you are ready to embark on a watercolour adventure, unlock exclusive content and join a community that celebrates the beauty of botanicals, hit that join button, which I will link in the description. You can join and leave at any time and they're ad free over there and you won't find any of our Patreon tutorials here on YouTube. They are written exclusively for my patrons. So if that's something that interests you, do check it out and it's a way that you can support my channel and I'd love to see you there. But of course you can join for free if you just want those outlines. This is my blender brush that I'm using damp just to lift out some colour in the way that I would with watercolour paint. Again it adds a little bit of interest, a bit of depth of colour and it just stops the paint from looking flat. This is burnt orange adding and building up these colours, you can see already that this pansy is taking form. Now I ought to mention the photograph this week is another special one. It was a competition winner that we launched a little while ago over on our Facebook group. Um, Joan was the winner and provided us with this lovely photograph. So thank you very much to Joan for letting us use your stunning photograph here today on the Wonders of Watercolour and um, Thank you for, and congratulations on winning. Uh, the, this is the final winning photograph for this batch that um, the winner had their painting, their photograph made into a YouTube video. So I hope I've done you proud. So thank you once again for letting us use your, um, your lovely photograph. Now one thing I want to mention, if you are new to using Inktense pencils, once you've, once you've activated the colour on your little scribble pad, you'll need to keep reapplying it because once it's been activated and dried, you won't be able to reactivate it. So each time you activate, you'll need to scribble out some more to pick up that pigment. Um, that's the whole benefit of using Inktense is that once they're dry, they won't lift off. So if you need to add more colour, you will just need to scribble out a little bit more. I've added two greens here, Ionian green and spring green. We needed to add a little bit of colour to the, um, the flower. I decided to just add a few more little bits and pieces to it. And I've switched down to my tiny little uh, jar that you can see, my little heart-shaped jar of water there. The jar was a little bit too big. So picking up the Ionian green, first of all, I did feel that some of these had a little bit of a blue tone. So by adding plenty of water, you dilute that pigment and just make it nice and light to start with. As with watercolour, ink tents are very buildable and we always work from light to dark. So start off with your lightest colour first of all. You can see I'm using my number two brush. All the brushes are from my set from Craftamo and as I said, we're doing a second run and hopefully we'll be ready to go around um, towards the end of April 2024. So if you are interested, Click the link in the description box and you'll be notified when we are ready to launch. If you are enjoying this video, could I ask you to hit that like button? I'd really appreciate it. It means that more people could get to see my videos and it would help my channel grow. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel and this content interests you, would you mind smashing that like button and subscribing? It means that you are notified every week when we upload new content. Another way that you can apply um, ink tents is directly onto the paper. Now, I dislike doing it this way because I find that it just gets a little bit too, uh, too grainy and toothy. 
you can see the grain of that paper underneath because I do like using a cold pressed paper. You can see here that although you get a, a stronger colour, you do get that kind of look where you can still see that pencil mark underneath. It's not something I like a huge amount, but it does mean that I get to show you the different ways of applying it. I did a video on how to use ink tents um, to create shape and form, and I'll put that on the top of your screen now so that you can have another look to see how to apply it and create um, how you can build up your layers to get the depth of color that you need. So check that out. I'll put it on the top of your screen right now so you can have a look at it and um, play around with ink tents. So remember to stay right until the end of this video where I'll put the pencil drawing for you to screenshot. I'll also put the photo, the reference photograph so that you can have access to that as well. But remember for the digital version, um, we'll just need to join Patreon for free and you can get that delivered directly to your inbox. We're back to red oxide and burnt orange. And again, I'm just swatching these out on my little swatch card. And once again, I'm just showing you the difference between applying it directly onto the paper like this and also from swatching it out. Now, when you're applying it this way, make sure that the layer underneath is completely dry because it will just go muddy and it'll stick to the paper and you won't be able to blend it. So it's really, really important that every layer is dry before applying the next in the same way that you would use watercolor. Using my number two brush, I'm activating that ink. Once again, leaving a tiny little gap between the petals that you can see there on the flower. You can see that by activating that ink with water, it brings it to life. But again, I don't like this look because I have used a cold pressed paper which has texture. Um, this is 100% cotton and it's just, it just sticks and I'm not massively keen on that look, which is why I prefer to do it um, the other way that I showed you earlier on. But I just wanted you to see um, how you can get a stronger colour by doing that. And of course, we all have our own ways of working. Many of you might like to apply it this way. If you're using a hot press paper, say, you might get a, a much, much uh, smoother look. But I prefer to use it the way I've been showing you all along. But just wanted you to see um, how it looks when you apply it directly onto the watercolour paper. Already this is looking really, really nice. We have done a pansy in watercolour before, actually, here on The Wonders of Watercolour. Um, a much more subtle looking one. Um, and I'll put that again on the top of your screen. So if you want to have a go at that one, you can click through and you can take a look at that too. Burnt orange going on here. You don't have to use the same colours as me, by the way. You can use whatever ones you have in your kit. You don't have to use intense pencils. You can use watercolour. Um, if you are struggling with matching up your colours, um, let me know in the comments and I'll help you out. I know sometimes um, we do use the different materials here on the Wonders of Watercolour and I want everybody to be able to join in with our tutorials. So if you are struggling with matching up the colours and you don't have them, you don't have to go out and buy them. Just let me know what you've got and I'll tell you in the comments below um, which ones you can use if you want to join in and try and get these colours matched up as best you can. And it's also a great way of getting to know your watercolours or your coloured pencils or whatever um, so that you can join in and get used to using them. I'm using this wet on wet. So I've wet the paper and just dropping in that pigment and I'm going to do the same to all the others and let it dry, which it now has done. So we're ready to go for our next layers. You can see me here pointing out the difference between the two and how it's much nicer, much smoother using the method that I'm showing you here by swatching out that color and applying it this way. So using my number two brush, we're back to Ionian green and spring green and just picking up that pigment to start building up those colors, adding a little bit of detail just to give a bit of variation onto the little bits of greenery that I've applied to the side. Intense pencils are very, very versatile. They're great to use. And like I said, if you are um, if you like using watercolour and you are struggling a little bit with it, so I know it can be a tricky medium to work with, 
do try these because they are absolutely wonderful. You can build them up and you can do it confidently without worrying that that's going to lift off in the way that watercolour does. So if that's something that you have struggled with, I urge you to give these a go. You can buy them individually. Um, I'll put the link in the description box. You can buy them from Jackson's and they're fairly inexpensive. If you buy the odd one or two, you don't need to buy all of them. So um, just check them out. We're back to Shiraz. This is the dark burgundy colour and the red oxide. Uh, two strong colours there. And again, using my number two brush to activate that ink and taking it from my swatch card there. I like to swatch them out on watercolour paper, but as I said earlier on, you can buy um, from, I think it's Karen Dash Do. It's like a Perspex kind of, um, like a chopping board, I suppose. You can scribble them onto that and uh, you can reuse it, which is much better, I suppose, but I didn't have one, so I'm using my paper. This is my number four brush from my set from Craftamo. This has a super, super fine point. Uh, and it's great for finer detail. So I'm using it uh, at this point to try and add a little bit of veining, to add a little bit of veining, picking it up. This is uh, Shiraz and a little bit of red oxide mixed in. Any darker color that you've got there, you can see how I'm going over that natural line that I had and extending the veins over that area um, to create some form. At this point, we've got quite a way to go, but it's a repeat now of everything that I'm doing. So I'm going to stop talking. And as always, at this point, let you listen to some soothing music and watch me paint. Remember, if you have any questions, to drop them in the comments below. I'm always on hand to answer your questions, any queries that you've got about painting. Please ask me, that's what I'm here for. I'm here to help you. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to stay right until the end. Once again, a huge thank you to Joan for letting us use your stunning photograph. And um, I really hope that I've done you proud using uh, painting this for you today. So once again, uh, stay until the end where you can have access to that outline and the, uh, the reference photograph that you see on your screen. Once again, thank you for watching. Do subscribe, do like if you've liked, and um, I'll see you next time. Thank you.